scorched glow of plate. The other dwarves scurry with a curious mixture of haste and caution. They stack the bundles in a din of muted clangs and thumps, following the echoes of the ruckus down the tunnel with nervous eyes. Pay attention. Pay attention! <laughs> sooner we get this done, sooner we can go. Your voice is a dry whisper and your nerves tingle with energy. You feel the same apprehension that the others do, but unlike them, you relish it. Still, you look over your shoulder, just in case. We're hurrying, Captain Gregor. Honest. When you turn back, the others have redoubled their efforts, and you feel a pleasurable twist in your gut as they fill the cart. Being captain in the guard doesn't pay much, but it does allow you to visit the armory without raising eyebrows. With uh, Coinmaster Zoltan selling off half of the battery's arsenal, who's going to notice a few more missing pieces? Besides, you've got a buyer lined up. As long as you can move these goods out of the battery before someone squeals. Pull back from memory to find a window staring at you. Excuse me, sir. You all right? Okay, I'm going to save it. We're going to see how bad things go with the old woman. We might be checking out both outcomes here. Don't awaken the poor little cinnamon bun. <laughs> It's for the good of the quest, Tenwin. It's for the good of everything. Now nah, we'll try the old woman. I think I might have done this before, and I think I actually went with the old woman. This might have been the last thing I did, because I know I never actually went inside Dorgan's battery, but... All right, let's see what Not happens to speak here. Up. My hearing ain't what it was. Wake and Zenova, remember your battle in the feast hall. A tremor passes through Tana's face, and then her rumpled skin goes slack. After a racking cough, she blinks as someone slowly coming to her conscious. She, from what I was getting out of stuff with her, and I think the mayor says something about her too, she seems like she's developing dementia or Alzheimer's or something like that anyway, so. That name, it carries memories of death. War. Fury. The taste of blood. What do you want with it? Her eyes have grown unusually clear. Look out. It don't take a nose to smell the trouble on this one. I need to enter Durgan's battery. What trickery is this, stranger? You think a Pargrin would so easily betray her own people? Her hands clench and unclench around an imaginary weapon. Sinov's essence stirs with the same battle-ready furor you sensed in her memory from Durgan's battery. She is dangerous. Beneath Sinov, Tanea's overwhelmed consciousness struggles. You'd never betray Durgan's battery. Your loyalty is plain to see. You speak like one who knows me. Her fury abates and confusion seeps in his place. You test his con contours for purchase. Then you're not one of Zoltan's visiting merchants or Xandru's foreign zealots. You're one of us. Even as Zeno speaks to the old woman, you feel Tania's consciousness recover and steady itself. I haven't been inside Durgan's battery, that's why I need your help. Suspicion is playing on her face, but a chant bursts from her lips, seemingly of its own accord. Hammers of Durgan ring loud, made the anvil's deep music resound. Walls of the battery safeguard our works from Marauder and Wilder alike. A bidden's faithful travail by the forge and the fires of bright in the ore. She takes a deep breath and her eyelids droop. Inside the old woman's body, the personalities and memories of Zenov and Tania vie for dominance. Zenea Zenov is wrestling full control from Tania. You feel the old woman's personality nearly smothered beneath Zenov's intensity. Tania fades with every passing second, but it still may be possible to pull her to the surface. Damn. Wait a minute. Constitution. I wonder if I can do it with a constitution check. Because that's up there too. And my constitution might actually be doable. I might be able to boost that. Snow seizes control with a ferocity that jostles Tania's frail limbs. She looks up at you and her furious gaze is one of a woman still lost in violent distant memories. 
It's too much for Tania's dying consciousness. It shrivels and vanishes as an O now in full control of Tania's body attacks. Let me see something first. Hold up. How off is my constitution from 18? 16. I'm getting two from an ancestor pendant. I don't think food's going to raise it more than one. Story of my life, I'm one short. <laughs> Story of my pillars of eternity life. Yeah, I don't have anything. Dear, you don't have anything to boost your constitution three, do you? But you don't have anything boosting your constitution. I thought you did. I must have taken that off you. I think we're going to have to. There are foods that rise, that rise up too. Hold up. Let's see if I have some. Plus three damage reduction. I really need to sell these traps. I hate having a lot of clutter. Move speed. Perception plus one. Plus three might. Actually, I might be able to make a dish if I can't find something that's straight up in here. So I keep forgetting I can make things plus one. Plus one, plus one, plus one, plus one, plus one, plus one. Okay, let's see something. Plus two might. Pearlwood chicken. Craft. So this will put me at 18. Whoops. Just eat it. All right, uh. let's see what happens. Got to speak up. My hearing ain't what it was. All right, awaken. That remember, me. need Ender Dragon's battery. What is this stranger? You Perception. Speak, then you're not one of Zoltan's. Never been inside. Okay. Reach into Tana's soul and suppress Sinov's personality. Tana's soul is a battleground of memories and personalities, and reaching into it causes you physical pain. Your muscles ache with the exertion of battle, and your flesh throbs and stings with a thousand spectral wounds. Yet you steady yourself and pull Tania to the surface, forcing Zenov's rage and violence into dormancy. When you open your eyes, you're surprised to find a flesh unmarked and no sign of the struggle, except for the woman in front of you. <sighs> she lets out a great sigh that sounded exactly like she just did, expelling the rage and trauma of her past life like so much vapor. But when she looks back up at you, her eyes are bright with new energy. Did I nod off? My, but I had the strangest dream. She shakes her head and dusts her hands on her trousers. So much work to be done. Pardon me, but I'd better check on those miners. At the rate they're going, it'll be another year before they clear that blazing shaft. I, she's kind of okay. And it's all because of the power of chicken and vegetables. Wait, I must have missed this pop-up. Where is it popping up now? No.
I got the best outcome. See? I'm telling you, chicken and vegetables. For the last two years, sailors on the grace of Siamena have seen a pair of lights dancing over the waves late at night. Those who have come close have reported hearing two women's voices singing a song of unparalleled beauty. Some believe they are the souls of Alessa and Pelan, ill-fated lovers from a century ago who were cast out of Ensenzi by a mob and driven from the cliffs to their death. Ensenzi's duchet... Du Duchess? Condemned... Duchess condemned the mob's actions, but the unsympathetic Songretta Ducala did little to punish the offenders. Since the rumors about the lights have spread, romantic Valians have gone to the cliff or even rowed small boats out from the shore at night to catch a glimpse of the spirits. And Senzi's new duke is doing his best to curb the behavior, but he believes the only true remedy will be putting the spirits to rest. No small task given when and where they appear. Alright, let's send, uh... How long is this going to take? Two days. Kana, go for it. Alright, so, sweet. That went well for a change. Now, give me a second. I got some text here I got to check out. girlfriend was texting me to check on there's this like baby bird just hanging out in a bush outside and she's worried about it he's all right though she was worried about it being okay in a storm that never actually happened all right so i think we're good to go to uh durgan's battery at least check it out so let oh wait devil oh we still got to do that thing with the fishery let's talk to the devil real quick didn't think there was anything more in lice and hoarfrost to these folk but you had a look back there what do you find when you're rooting around like that you seem rather interested in these villagers all of a sudden why mayhap i'm looking for someone woodcutter by the name of harmka Tell me why you want to find Harmka. So I can kill him. Wrap my fingers around his throat till he's as cold as his wretched village. Gonna guess that's the guy to burn your house down. Your fingers tighten in the fist, the metal squealing and rattling. He was one of them. The mob that destroyed Cold Morn. I tracked him to Stalwart years ago, but got caught before I could finish my business. Dark iridescent rolls appear and fade on her chest plate. Heat ripples from her metal carapace. You want me to help you murder someone? Oh, don't go all soft on me. He's had it coming. A note of cool, cold fury buzzes within her. This man, Harmka. I saw him outside my house the night it burned, staring into the flames the way I seen you stare into souls. Her fists clench and loosen a series of rapid, random movements. I knew it were a fool's errand trying to hunt down every man and woman that carried a torch into cold morn, but I... She twists her head from side to side and holds up a hand, a delicately engraved palm empty but grasping as something. If I knew I got the one responsible for my kin and my hearth, I might could rest easy. How can you be so sure about this Harmkey fellow? I mean, you just saw him staring at a fire. I took a good long look that night. Ours was a little place with a yellow door right on the edge of town. He was there. She nods slowly. Besides, I asked around when I first got to Stalwart. Townsfolk said that all the woodcutters in town took part in the purge. Point of pride for them. 
What's this have to do with me? I told you he was part of the mob. I spotted him watching my house when it burned. But when we find him, I want to know if he's the one responsible for my home, my parents, and my brothers and sister. One of her thumbs rubs absently at a scratch on her hand. I never thought I'd have the chance to know for sure. But you could look into his soul and find out. You being a watcher and all. Finding out might be getting your hopes up. How would you feel about a solid hunch instead? I'll do what I can. Mighty fine of you. Mighty fine indeed. She nods again, her head bobbing along to a drowsy cadence. Don't know where he dallies these days, but someone in Stalwart could tell us. People from little villages, they always know. Alright, I guess we could ask around about that dude. You don't have anything about him. Hey there. Let me know if you need anything. Do you know anything about a man named Harmke? Harmka? Saw him head out some time ago. You can usually find him and some others out in the russet wood, felling trees. Well, what are we waiting for? Read a Valian mystery that started out like this. It ended badly. Is there anything else? I'll be going. Take care. Hmm. I say we go find this fella. And there's supposed to be a bounty out here too. I guess I can find out how brutally I'm gonna die to that. Then again, I got that Metzla or whatever her name was and I killed her fairly easily. So maybe this won't be so bad. Woodcutter's Grove. I wonder if that's where the woodcutters are at. It's him, Harmke. I remember that weak chin and his knobbly knees. She stops staring motionless at the figures among the trees. He best get a handle on her liquid. His eyes fly wide in alarm. How goes? What? Could you say that again? <laughs> I guess. The elven man emerges into the clearing and freezes, staring at the devil of Karok. For an elf, he's tall and rangy, with a weather-beaten face beneath stringy, greasy hair. The others with him turn, glaring and gaping at the bronze golem. Horrock's oh, shadow! What's that wicked thing doing here? Harmke swallows, a lump bobbing in his neck. Why are you so nervous? It's a killer! Look, we don't want no trouble. Just trying to do our work. Beads of sweat have formed on his forehead despite the chilly air. We'd be much obliged if you'd leave us be. And take that thing with you. He looks at the devil with a mixture of terror and loathing. That's not very nice. There's a soul inside of this thing. Enough. What do you see, Liquid? What is... Is that the man who torched us? Well, at least she's letting me, like, check him out. The devil sways on her feet, her whole body moving around the axis of her ankles. Although she's talking to you, her attention, a concentrated spear of essence, is focused on Harmke. Who are you? Just a woodcutter. Ask anyone in Stalwart. They'll tell you. What are you dialing for? See what's written in a bastard's soul. Her essence boils of frost. Chill. Harmke, do you remember the village of Codemorn? Everyone does. Let the raid Sarens into the Deerwood. What's that got to do with anything? I want answers, Liquid. If he don't stop his mewling, so help me, I'll rip them out of his head myself. Let's get this done. She's about to boil over. All right, fine. He steps away from you, but your awareness reaches through his trembling skin and the feeble resistance of his fear. You see memories, snow-shrouded forests partitioned by fallen pines and fears, days measured by the sweaty, ugh, steady swing of your axe. There are other moments too, recollections that flare up like a hearse welcoming fire. 
There are children, spry and lanky like you, but still full of the rowdy energy of youth. Together you scatter winter bloom petals on a grave. You reach deeper into Harmke's soul. Years roll back. A torch in your left hand bathes your face and shoulder in heat. All around you are other men and women holding other torches, and the mountain air is acrid with the stench of smoke and sweat. Rage billows off all the others. It's been a fever in your blood for days now, exhausting you and invigorating you in equal measure. You're at the edge of that town, Coldmorn. It's hours yet before dawn, but the commotion has started to awaken the village. Candlelight ignites behind frost-crusted windows, and haunted faces peer out, at, ugh, peer out at you through the glass. You begin to doubt yourself. Just then, a door slams. The villager comes racing through the streets, kicking up snow. With his white, with his stark white face and pale hair, he looks almost like a ghost. The line of torchbearers ripples as you as he gets closer. He picks up speed, but nobody moves towards him. You imagine him breaking through the row, scattering your ranks like the bad dream that brought you all here. You imagine waking up in your bed, the heat from your torch nothing more than the warmth of your wife sleeping next to you. Instead, the villager reaches the row of torchbearers a stone's throw away from you. A woman advances from the line and buries her dagger in his neck. The rest of your fellows shout. Rage, memory, and bloodthirsty triumph boil up in you. You all came with a purpose. You came to bring just justice to the traitors of Coldmorn. Next few hours are painted in colors more vivid than life. You put your torch to anything that stands and your sword to anyone who runs. It is as if Magrin herself whispers in your ear and guides your hand. Okay, so this guy did do some bad shit. Exhaustion has almost cooled your rage when you spy a house at the edge of town. One of the only buildings that hasn't already been burned. It's flanked by naughty spruce trees and the door is painted yellow. Yellow, the bloom of sunrise, the hue of your son's hair, the color of cowardice. <clears throat> Excuse me. Just then, someone barrels into you from behind. It's a man, someone you remember from the journey, journey to Coldmore and that you can't recall his name. He snarls at you, mad with indiscriminate rage, and it occurs to you that he's mistaken you for one of the villagers. You smash the window and hurl your torch inside. The other man is turned away. You think you hear a child shriek within the house, but it's impossible to tell about the roar of the riot. Harmke shivers as you pull away from his memory. His eyes are wide with guilt and fear. Oh, you did a bad thing. Spit it out, Liquid. What did you see? Her feet are rooted in the snow, but her limbs jerk and jangle. Oh, crap. Now I have a moral obligation. I could lie to her. Because I have a feeling if I tell her that he burned down the house, I'm going to have to kill everybody here, and that's probably going to make people unhappy with me. He burned down your house. She stares at Harmkey. You hear only a whirring mechanism in her throat, but Harmkey leans closer. What? What did you say? His mouth quivers. What did it feel like? The torch in your hand, the blade you carried, what did they feel like? A wild, inhuman scream echoes out of the bizarre machinery of her throat. It drops Harmkey and his companions to their knees, where they cry out in terror. Gears squeal and crank as she rushes at him. Oh, I was afraid of this. I'm gonna kill him, but I, I have to think about this one. Here, I'll let you go for hard key, this one you want. He did throw the torch, unless I read that wrong. Oh, there are Aldurans. Well, 
I'll run with it. I'm gonna save it. That was justice. He did throw the torch, he did kill a kid. Right here. And him being knobbly need and rangy and, you know, being scared and stuff doesn't excuse that. Almost 15 years I've been looking for him. She stares ahead as you approach, the ink black marbles of her eyes fixed on some distant point. Her essence swells and swirls in the throes of contemplation. All that fretting and wondering. And the deed's over in less time than it takes to tell. My cousin says something similar after her wedding <laughs> after her wedding night. Um How do you feel now? She says nothing at first, and you hear only the dull clicking of something in her chest. I killed a lot of folk in my time. Felt their blood slick in my hands, smelled their flesh as it burned. She holds her hands in front of herself as they twitch and spasm. And I always used to imagine what it would be like to have Harmka under my knife, feeling his breath come hot and fast, smelling the fear ooze out of him. And? Couldn't feel a thing. His fading pulse weren't no more than a powder of rain to me. She shrugs, letting her arms clatter to her sides. What do you mean? This body. It weren't made for feeling. Gouging my fingers into Harmka's wasting flesh, his screams just buzzing in my skull. She flexes and flexes her fingers in a few lightning quick motions. All it did was remind me. Of what? That this is a madman's fever dream. Like a prison. But no, because in a prison, you lay your head down and you feel the straw soft beneath you. Your flesh prickling in the cold, black bread crumbling on your tongue. She turns her arms in front of you, examining a scrollwork on the back of her hands with horror and wonder. You're right, that sounds awful. I still dream I'm folk. I wake up some mornings wondering why I can't feel the floor beneath me. Thinking I, I must have fallen and gone crippled. But then I lift my head, see a bronze corpse stretching out in front of me. She lowers her head, a tremor runs through her. That's interesting, she sleeps. You would think she wouldn't have to do that. I'm sorry you have to go through that. It's not pity I want, it's a choice. She draws back from you. I dream too of what Galvino did that night. Those moments. I'd endure another cold morn if it had spare me this fate. She rubs her hands together, tracing her even joints with her fingertips. What happened exactly? It was after I got caught in Stalwart. They'd locked me in a little house by the inn, the old mayor and his cronies. Her head dips as she remembers. When a crowd of them came for me in the dark of night, I was only surprised it had taken them so long. She has tits. Only they didn't march me to no gallows. No. They snuck me to another house on the edge of town, real sneaky-like. That's where I met Galvino. She raises her head, her black eyes shining. What was he doing there? He was fiddling with some machinery in his workshop. Had his sleeves rolled up, even though it was cold enough to see your breath. Never actually looked at me until he started fitting some copper helmet over my head. By that time, the mayor's goons had me trussed up good and tight. Galvino was having himself a grand time barking orders at that lot. What did the mayor have to do with this? He had agreed to hand me over to Galvino for an experiment. Claimed it was a fair punishment, but the town folk weren't too pleased with being denied their stone pitching. She crosses her arms, nodding. Didn't help that they heard the jangle of copper in that deal. In the end, that's what sent Galvino and the old mare packing. So while Galvino's fastening that helmet over my head and them copper bands around my arms, I'm starting to look at his contraption. And that's when I see it. Her black eyes are fixed on some indefinable point. Her essence dims. It's this metal suit strapped into the machine just like me. A cold, dead-eyed thing, all done up with fancy carvings and such. She shivers, her joints chittering. Did you know what they intended? I had this terrible cold feeling in my gut, but I still couldn't figure. She shakes her head. I start asking Galvino and the rest of them what's going on, but they're too busy to answer. Then suddenly, they're waiting, 
staring at me with that fixed, horrified look. But they ain't watching me. They're watching for something to happen. Her eyes flicker, rolling escape, scraping behind her face. Galvino tells the woman nearest the machine to flip the handle. And then, just pain. Being torn apart every which way, feeling my soul peeled from my body. Her limbs twitch and shudder. She pauses, waiting for her body to fall still. By the time I came to, I couldn't feel a thing. Just this dull distant sort of ache. Oh, you're not going to read this part? Huh. I heard the old man cackling and chattering. When I saw him looming over me, looking down at me with hungry eyes, I tried to scream and tried to swing at him. I think that was when I knew. She shakes her head and falls silent. How can anyone put another person through something so terrible? I reckon I'm the wrong person for that sort of question. But if it cools your conscience, Galvino didn't get off easy. The rest of Stalwart didn't take kindly to having a killer in their midst, nor to seeing their mayor and the army of aliens strike a secret deal. They drove Galvino out, destroyed a fortune in machinery, and wrote a letter to the Academy in Salona, ruining what was left of his name. Still, he's lucky he didn't get a pelting. The old mare fled, too, and Stalwart's been as snug and cheery as ever. Now that we've dealt with Harmkey, why have you stuck around? You're better company than Galvino. She says in an offhand, teasing fashion, but she looks away from you, fidgeting with a rivet. Been a while since I were out in the world. Guess I'm keen on seeing more of it. Even if I'm stuck with a bleeding heart. Anyways, I've been wondering about that fortress. She looks away again, flexing a wrist joint. You're acting unusually coy. She's quiet, fixated on her squeaking joint. Near everyone thinks it'll have just the thing they need. She ticks the list off on her clicking fingers. Those villagers wanted to fix up their brook downtown. Galvino always thought it carried some great secret of Animanson. And all them adventurers came looking for fancy gear. What are you hoping to find? I don't know. Something to help me feel. Or forget. Effigy's eyes. Maybe just something new. Tips of her metal fingers clack together. I just figured, with those dwarves being expert smiths and all, maybe they had something to unmake me. Put me back into my body. I don't want to ask her this because I don't want to upset her, but I doubt that's possible. Your body's decayed by now, I would imagine. Perhaps we'll find something yet. You really think so, huh? Well, ain't like you to blast hot air. I wanted to ask you something. Never mind. I don't. I'm just kidding. Alright, so all these woodcutters are dead. Sure. But apparently they burned down a place, so screw them. Alright, we're gonna save it. There is a bounty here somewhere. I'm wondering if it's at the camp. One of these two camps down here. And the guy that gave me the quest basically told me they were harder than the other two bounties, which doesn't bode well, but I'm going to take a look at them and see how bad they are. There's a fallen deer. I wonder if they're around that. Guess he just died. Mm -hmm. Unless they're over here. Uh, I just saw that purple smoke again. You got to this. Tattered map. The shallow piece of parchment shows a rough drawing of a cluster of trees, but little else. They could be anywhere in a white march. Well, they're between two roads. 
I'll hold on to that. Wonder if that's the thing that one note was talking about when he says that there was something in the russet wood around the lake. Unless that's what the uh Maybe that's what that other piece of paper was talking about. The uh chest was buried in the eyes. It said there was something about a treasure here or something. I'd have to dig up the paper again, but. I've got too many books to go look for right this second. Alright, where are you guys at? here before? I guess I was there before. I don't know why I didn't notice that. Lanerick in the Russet Wood. They were last seen in the Russet Woods. There's here somewhere. I might have just found him. Yep. Oh, crap. All right, where are you at so I know where to find you before you kill me? You're probably going to kill me. I am not ready for this. Beguiler. A cell sword. Spell sword, my bad. Conjurer. Oh, man. And <laughs> my tank is way over there. Awesome. Line up quick. Man, you got a lot of guys, don't you? Lane Rick. A junior. Okay, you have a junior wizard. Oh, yeah, that's not good for you, I would imagine. You don't have a proper wizard. You got, like, Wizard Junior over here. Alright. Devil, you. Oh, shoot. Yeah, I needed to rest. Devil, you don't need to have backstab available. Alright, let's see if casting a fireball down this way. Knocks out their mirror images. Okay. I doubt it, but it's worth a shot. Devil, you don't really have a ton of tricks up your sleeve now because you're unable to 
turn invisible blinding strike. Finishing blow. Okay, let's try with you to actually go into missile mode for a minute. Go after the Beguiler. Sagani. Skip the Cell Sword. Go after the Beguiler because he can probably charm people. Durance. I believe you have stuff that counters that now. Friendly AoE, immunity to charm and dominate it. Go for it. Wait a minute. That does the same thing, 27 seconds. So you got two different spells to do that, except this one looks like it has more stuff. Oh wait, does that only hurt one or affect one person? Yeah, that only affects one person, that's why. Okay. stuck. That's not good. Durance, where you at? Okay, now buff everybody. These guys have a lot of casters. Oh man, Liquid, you're in deep crap. Heal. Crap, everybody's getting blasted here. Okay, Durance. Holy Radius. Scani, back off. Wounding shot. Go after this. He's almost dead. And Adir is currently confused. When in doubt, start nuking people. Aloth, you done being stuck? Now you're terrified. Shit, liquid. Heal up. Alright. Spell Sword's dead. The Guiler's dead. Adamok's coming after me. That's not good. He's confused. Move this way. Necromancer's almost dead. Let's get him. Devil, you're going melee. Get down here. If you're not, oh, you're stuck. Now you're not. Get down here. Finishing blow. Got him. Devil's got her uses. I like her in combat. She's fun. Aloth, you're currently terrified and blinded. Durance, you're confused. Sagani. Who else left in this mess? Go after the Conjurer. <laughs> Where are you at? Can you move yet? Yeah, you can't get back. You're still terrified and you're getting your ass handed to you. Can you heal yourself, maybe? Devil, you got another finishing blow in you? End him. 
Alright, got him. Okay, I think we just got the Spell Sword and Lane Rick. Alright, I can do this. Aloth, where are you at? Durance. Cleansing Flame on Lane Rick. Let's try to put him away. Aloth. Heal yourself if possible. Devil. Have a drink. My dear, I don't even know where you're at in this mess. Go after Lane Rick. Adamok, you're somehow still alive. How bad did that hurt him? Oh, either way, Itama killed him. Alright, one guy left. And Liquid died in the middle of that. I almost managed to put that away without Liquid dying. Shame. Without anybody dying. Alright, Stormcaller went up. Bulwark against the elements. That's a good thing to have. Now I need to kill 5 Kith Druids with Stormcaller, or kill 25 enemies with Stormcaller. Now Sagani's always killing things, so that shouldn't be hard to do. I'll take your money. Got a couple of Weathered Grimoires for Aloth. Fine wand and exceptional pole axe. We'll put that away until I actually sit down and go through my inventories like I plan on doing. Ooh, we got a lot of spell books. Lots of money. Lane Rick's head. Potion of minor endurance. Actually give that to her. Take the hoods. Fine, exceptional scale, exceptional padded, exceptional mail, exceptional wand, exceptional scepter, exceptional rod, exceptional poleaxe, cape of the master mystic, grants invisibility when hit by a critical hit once per encounter, plus 12 deflection, grants minor arcane reflection, minor spell reflection. Hmm. Grants invisibility when hit by a critical hit. That's got me thinking. Lover's Light completed. Connor returns to the stronghold. Let's check that real quick. Priest of Andra and a crew of greedy sailors were all it took to row Kana out to the spot where Alessa and Pelian's ghosts were singing. Fortunately, the chaos of the storm overturned a small boat. Kana, the priest, and the sailors were all plunged deep into the grace of Siamena. Miraculously, most of them submerged in a great sea cave near Barda. Though the entrance to the cave was hidden from the surface, the interior held wonders that had not been seen for generations. Sunken warships, trade vessels, and remnants of the unlucky travelers that had fallen victim to the grace in the past. Kana and Ragtag Group discovered a tribe of survivors that had persevered in the caves through cannibalism and limited raiding. Their extensive time in the cave had left them unintelligible and wild. Though some attacked the crew of the recently sunk boat, Kana was able to scare the others off. Eventually, the group found their way to a pile of bones that contained the remains of Alessa and Pelan. The Andre priests buried the pair together and performed a service over their bodies. With that, the spirits retreated from the world and toured beyond. Copper Lover's Ring. Grants Swap Endurance. 100 Endurance transferred from the caster. Swap Endurance. Transferred from the caster. So I'm guessing whoever has the other ring gets the 100 Endurance. I can actually see tactical uses for that. I'm probably not going to use it. <clears throat> but I can see some tactical uses for that. Yeah. All right. Uh, this cape. What do you have on you? 
Minor Cloak of Protection. I'm wondering if she gets hit and she goes invisible, if she can, like, turn around, I'd have to kind of see what's going on in combat to see if she's actually turning invisible. She can turn around and backstab. That would basically give her a free backstab. Once per encounter. Oh, it's when hit by a critical hit, though. Plus 12 deflection. I'll sleep on that right. one. She has to get criticaled. That's the thing. That's more of a defensive thing for a wizard, probably. Or just about anybody. Alright, so that's done. Get out of here. Let's go. First of all, to the village. I'm going to get some proper sleep, and then I think we're going to try to get this other bounty. Might as well get that done. Maybe it's nighttime and I can go deal with the fishery. No, it's not. to warm your hands, eh? What can I do for you? I demand a room and beer. Top quality bear pelts on every bed. You won't be disappointed. Let's go with uh, Golden Whale. Hmm. Not a thought. These rooms give resting bonuses. It still wouldn't work. I probably can't stack resting bonuses. I was trying to think if there's one outside of K Nua that gives resolve boost. But if I get that bonus, I would lose the one I would get from K Nua. I'd still be short. All right. Watch Falls. Now they could be damn near anywhere here.
Now you're not where Umar was, but now I got Frost this here. Might as well kill them off. Ayla, Fireball. Oh, crap, Sagani. There you go, run. Get him to try to get to a deer. You stay back. Devil, get down here. What does your aggressive AI do? If you're gonna like do something silly, like go stealth and use all of your cool stuff, then actively seek out. Okay, we'll just do that. Aggressive uses crippling strike, binding strike, withering strike, fearsome strike only if per rest is enabled. At the first opportunity, use his finishing blow against targets below. I can try it. You're not going to use your per rest ability, so let's see what happens. Oh crap, Durance, I wasn't even paying attention. Wake up, Liquid, wake up. Aloth, you surprisingly did well for meleeing there. fight you in that tight corridor. Oh shit, here we go. True Flame Barbarian. And I did not save it after I killed those other guys. Back up. Ooh, Liquid just got hit with some ass. We're okay. Alright, you got a Druid, you got a Priest. Let them come out a little bit more. Ah, ah, Tanglefoot. Alright, go for him. We got a barbarian. Adrigan. Those are, I think, upgraded Pogwas, but like even better. Alright, we got another druid. There's not a ton of dudes here, it looks like. Alright, devil, get back. I have a feeling they're probably not getting infected by their own tangle foot. Alright guys, we'll pass. I gotta do something real quick here with, uh, Devil. Wait, wait a minute, what's happening to Devil here? 
crap, are you still invisible? Oh man, you're getting nailed by lightning. Whoa, 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 what happened? Okay, that dude turned into a freaking, what is that, a bear with antlers? <laughs> oh man, this is bad. I don't think we're coming back from this one. This is bad. Alof's dead, or Alof might as well be dead. Durance is stunned. I don't think a deer is killing all these dudes by himself. Oh, this is rough, this fight. This ain't gonna happen. Let's load. <laughs> Pull the enemies to the bridge with Idir placed firmly at the front. Can you basically not not lose? I could try it. Yeah. I'm worried about their uh, spells and stuff, though. Cause that lightning completely wrecked me there. I could try that though. If I can get a deer in the front and let liquid behind him with his great sword. Oh, I gotta finish you guys off again. No, I don't want you to melee these right now. get this set up here. Let's see. Hey. A deer. Stand right there. Liquid, you need to stay back. Hmm? Durance, you need to stand right about there because you're going to buff everybody. If it makes you rest easy. Itamalk, you're going to sit there. Hi. Aloth, you're going to go behind hmm. Liquid. Yes. Liquid yeah. right there. Uh-huh. Devil, you're probably going to be going missile for this one. Ready, watcher. Right here. Hi. What? I'm here. I'm gonna turn AI off for a second. I'm here. Let me try this. I'm on the trail. Hireling payday. This is totally useless, but a little bit of damage is better than none. Got an arrow for this. Ah, you hit the trap. Heard it go off. All right, it's so gonna get back. Ready, here. watcher. Oh crap! He can't get through. No, what, what, what you, I thought I turned AI off. What are you guys doing? Hey. Stop it. Stay there. Hey. La, la. 